coming for me. It's, uh, I'm from a really right-wing uh, Christian Republican family, and to rebel against them, uh, I always thought I was a communist. <laughs> I used to say I was a communist because it upset my family, and I didn't have the courage to be homosexual. <laughs> It was the next best thing on the list that would upset my family. My name is Tom Rhodes. I spend my life traveling the world as a stand-up comedian. This week, I'm in China with my pal Des Bish. Yes, yes. He's been living in Beijing for the past two years. Not only is he learning how to speak the Chinese Mandarin language, but he's also performing it. The cultural gap is huge. But that doesn't deter him from breaking into this potentially huge audience. If you had one mission for being in China, I would suggest you better learn how to make Chinese people laugh. Because America owes China a lot of money. And when the debt collector comes to the door, it'd be nice to make him smile. <laughs> so come join me and explore the funny side of China. China needs stand-up really bad, you know, because there's just too much happening in this society. As a comedian, what are the government restrictions and absolute taboo topics you could never go near here? Whatever you do, you cannot talk about the three T's. Tibet, Taiwan, Tiananmen, right? Tiananmen doesn't even exist here. Like, it's been completely washed. But you can't find a picture of the Tiananmen massacre in 1989 anywhere on the internet here. You have to use a, a, you have to go around the firewall to even see it, right? So those three things you can't talk about. You're not allowed to film in Tiananmen either. But here's China. All these regulations, our government guy was like, you're not supposed to film in Tiananmen, please don't film there. But if you're going to film, use a camera that looks like you're just taking pictures. So they kind of like, they get it, you know, like they don't really care if you film in Tiananmen, if you're just doing a bit in Tiananmen. What they do care is if you sit there and say, I'm in Tiananmen, this is where a load of kids were gunned down in 1989, that's a problem. Right. But of course the thing is they weren't gunned down in Tiananmen, they were gunned down near Tiananmen. They were actually gunned down trying to get there or trying to leave, you know, which is just goes to show you that like actually even 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 what we know in the West is skewed by the fact that a story is told and then everyone locks the story into their head, but actually sometimes the story is not exactly what you thought it was. You know, it's just like you know like Chinese whispers, coincidentally enough. Like Chinese whispers. So yeah, Tibet, forget it. Because like, the West is obsessed with Tibet. You know, like the West is just like a big fan of Tibet and I would be the same and you know, we we like the Dalai Lama, like we I love the Dalai I think the Dalai Lama is a very interesting character and a lot of us have seen Kundun and we would have resentments against China for the way they treat Tibet. And I think they're very valid, you know, and I think it's like a modern version of what England did to Ireland to a degree, you know. So much so that actually the Tibetan language is now under pressure because they're making all the kids do Chinese in school. That is an awful thing that China do and uh, that China has done. And, you know, if, if, if I talked about that and was seen talking about it, our documentary would get shut down. But then on the flip side, like anything you say in English, isn't really that big of a deal, but like if you started talking about it in Chinese, forget it. I mean, they're super, super sensitive about that. It's like, you can't even go to Tibet as a tourist unless you're with an official guide. The only way you can go to Tibet and just have free reign is if a Tibetan family invites you and they have to apply for that permit. So like Tibet is heavily, heavily controlled because, you know, like it has to be because it's awful what they're doing there. You know, and their claim on Tibet is loose. You know, it's a loose claim. I mean, they, they there's historical aspects of why China makes a claim to Tibet, I, I get that. But I mean, it's so clearly another culture, and so clearly, uh, you know, a different place in so many ways. The fact that at certain times in Chinese dynastic history, they had a claim over Tibet, does not change the fact that the way they took over Tibet, like the, the way they decided to say Tibet was China after the revolution, was a new invasion. You know, it was the next phase of China invading Tibet as opposed to China saying Tibet was always China, if you get what I mean. Right, 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 right. So that's, that's a sensitive one. Because, I mean, basically, I don't know if it's a fair comparison, but, you know, like, the genocide of the Native American happened when the world's media was not watching. <laughs> but if that was happening today, not only would America be a pariah, but there would just it just wouldn't be allowed to happen. It would quickly be you know, said that this is un unheard of. And, you know, to a lesser degree, but not completely unlike that, you know, a little bit like that is happening in Tibet, you know? I mean, it's not, it's not as much of a massacre, but it's, you know, they're, 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 they're kind of destroying a culture, and they're like, they're, you know, they've, they're, they're just doing, you know, it's not, it's not great what they're doing. 
But the difference is that the world's media is watching. So China are heavily, heavily sensitive about it because if too many people really knew what was going on in Tibet, they probably wouldn't be as supportive. Right. But like if you ask a Chinese person, you say like, you know, like, why do you hate the Dalai Lama? What about Tibet? Like some Chinese people will say, would you cut off your thumb and not be upset about it? In other words, why would we allow our thumb to be cut off? Tibet is part of China. Mm. You know, that's the way they perceive it. So for them, it's just like, why do you Western people care so much about Tibet? It's China, it's none of your business, and Dalai Lama is a terrorist. The, the one thing, I'll just give you an example in terms of like censorship and how it works. Uh, if you were to do a show in a big venue, like our shows are small, they're under the radar. We don't have a permit. You're supposed to have a permit to perform, right? So none of us get those permits. Like the show you're doing tonight is, is illegal. Officially, it's illegal, right? The fact that I'm paying you is illegal. The fact that we sell tickets is illegal. The fact that we have a gathered a group of people to listen to a performance is illegal. We're supposed to apply for a permit to the Cultural Bureau. We're supposed to go to the Cultural Bureau and apply for a permit. And to receive that permit, you have to submit a written script of the performance and then they have to say yay or nay. And usually in that yay or nay, there will be some amendments. There will be some highlight, bit, highlighted bits. The, 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 the green fluorescent pen will have been out as saying this is unacceptable and this is unacceptable. So if I say, for example, my Chinese was good enough in a year, say, and I had a bit of a following on Weibo and I decided I wanted to book a 350 seat venue uh, in the center of Beijing, I would have to submit my script and wait for the... Your entire show would have to be... My entire show. In China, we have a little sex education within family. Uh, the Chinese parents are always shy of um, telling their children where they come from. Uh, whenever they are asked, the, where do baby come from? We always got answers like, we picked you up from the dustbin. So now you understand that why China is not clean in some areas, because we don't put garbage in the dustbin. We leave babies there. What is funny about Chinese people? Uh, I think Chinese people tend to be serious, but actually, uh, when they feel safe in personal life, they are pretty, you know, uh, funny. They joke about everything. They do not have so much like uh, taboos that is deeply rooted in their mind, They're talking about sex or you know, women should not be playful, whatever. And also, uh, China is in the process of being more international and being much more influenced by the outside of the world. So, a lot of the taboos have been challenged especially among the younger generation like us. Uh, what kind of things do, do Chinese people make jokes about in everyday life? Like, what's a typical Chinese joke? Uh, I think definitely about their daily life and about sex. It's all about sex. This is a typical. The sex and politics are permanent jokes worldwide. It's the same here in China. It's only just the reason that uh, some of the things are not allowed to be in, you know, in public. So that, uh, that the Chinese sense of humor are seldom uh, are rarely known by the rest of the world. But if you look at you know, the Chinese uh, Twitter, like Sina Weibo, there will be you know, uh, hundreds and thousands of jokes coming out every day about the current affairs, which is really funny. People make jokes about the current affairs? The uh, current affairs. We may not worry about getting in trouble? Uh, there are sometimes it's a band, but um, in most cases that's okay, because that's, you know, that's not so-called mainstream. That's just the, the voice from the, the grassroots. So um, China is not as uh, closed as um, the, the outside people think, but uh, the only uh, thing is that uh, these voices cannot be seen in public media. For the experienced traveler going to China, my best travel tips are in Hong Kong, have a suit tailor-made at Rocky's HK Fashions. I've been using them for years and they can bring out the pimp in you too. They make it the way you want it. In Shanghai, on Saturday, go to Facebook Park. All the lonely people. I call it Facebook Park because it's where older people post up profiles of their children and gather and network trying to find the perfect mates for their children. In Beijing, travel the hour and a half to the Great Wall of China and make sure you go down the magnificent slide that's at the Great Wall. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's worth the trip to go all the way to the other side of the world just to go down this slide. Let's go up and do it again. Wasn't that great?
people who come like, I visited the Great Wall, and all you give a shit about is the it's it's slides. slides. Yeah, I swear to God, you know, the Great Wall is not as cool as that slide. <laughs>